the Eagles defense, right? The Eagles defense. We all know the defense. They had their real first test in week one. But I expect them to be way better at Lincoln Financial Field. We understand that the grass in Brazil, it didn't give the players a ton of traction. I know a lot of people don't like, don't like to complain about that kind of stuff. But I think the grass really played a factor in both teams not really being able to really tee off on defense. Um, the grass in Brazil, it, it didn't give players a ton of traction. It was hard to plant your feet and make a play. You saw it on offense. You saw it on defense. You saw it on both sides of the ball. Um, this had a big impact on both the Eagles and the Packers players. Uh, there was a moment where I think you saw Romeo Dobbs or was it Dontavion Wicks? You saw them slip on a – they were wide open and they slipped. And Jordan Love missed the throw because he slipped. So, you know, I'll say this. You know, because – you know, I, well, I say this because it became difficult to tell if the Eagles' pass rush was that bad or if they just couldn't get their footing. So I want to try to reserve judgment from this defense in terms of just, you know, allowing the explosive plays. And, you know, there were moments where they did miss a couple tackles, right? But I don't want to completely, especially the pass rush, I really, I don't want to fully indict this pass rush because I was watching the game again this morning and they really couldn't turn the corner. They couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't uh they, they couldn't plant their feet. You saw Nolan Smith, Josh Sweat, Bryce. Have you got you saw those guys slipping and sliding? Guys, guys really couldn't get around the corner. Guys can't guys couldn't get that push because they were literally slide sliding in the grass. So, and I know Bryce Huff and Josh Sweat and Nolan Smith didn't have the best game. I totally understand that. Totally understand it. But I just have this, I feel like they would be much better way better playing on Lincoln Financial Field grass. And they're going to be settled in their home for 10 days. That should help them get back into routine as well. But guys like Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, you got to get something from those guys. You got to. Zach Bond led the team in he, Zach Bond led the team in sacks. Led the team in sacks on um on Friday. He was the only one that got sacks. J Love says, yo, this is the first, this is like the third year in a row we played Kirk Cousins on Monday night at home. I know he hates us, bro. <laughs> I know he hates us. He definitely hates us. And you know he used to be in the NFC East, so he played the Eagles a lot in his career. Fanny says they should have brought different cleats or, or alternative cleats. They did. They had all different, they had all different types of cleats. You saw them changing the cleats on the sideline and all that. It, it just, it was what it was. It was what it was. But, um, you know, we, I think the Eagles, they should be able to get something off on Kirk Cousins. Seriously. Kirk Cousins is a statue. Bryce Huff and Josh Sweat and Nolan Smith. There's no reason any of them should leave that game without a sack. No reason. One of those guys got to get – listen, between Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, and Nolan Smith, I need two sacks. Between those three guys. I'm being generous now. I'm being generous. I'm being more than fair between Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, and Nolan Smith on Monday night. I need two sacks. And that's a low bar. You're going to be home. You ain't got to worry about the grass or the conditions. Lincoln Financial Field, the fans is bringing that energy, bringing that vibe. Road game for the Atlanta Falcons after they blew a home game. Take advantage. Between those three players, Bryce Huff, Nolan Smith, and Josh Sweat, I need two sacks between all three of those guys combined. That's more than fair. Alex O says, so Bryce Huff has to fight for playing time now after what Fangio said. Listen, I'm not mad at Vic Fangio's approach. The bottom line is um, Bryce Huff was a non-factor. Josh Sweat was a non-factor. Nolan Smith even though I felt like he had a little bit of a better game than both of those guys. Nolan Smith was a non-factor. You know, be, listen, like, um, like, like Fangio said, BG, there's no snap, there's no snap count. This isn't some homecoming for you. 
Put your put, put your damn cleats on. Put your shoulder pads on. Put your put your foot in the dirt and and get it popping. The hot hand, the best pass rushers on the field. Period. You paying Bryce up a lot of money. He better be one of those best pass rushers. He you paying him a lot of money, a lot of money. Bryce Huff better get it together. Seriously. It's only week one. So I want to reserve judgment. But he, but, but he, he come on now. Jay Love says, Tone, be mindful, however, however, that this is the best version of the Falcons we're getting because they're not trying to lose two, uh, lose the two PA teams back to back, LOL, and go down 0 and 2. Hey, listen, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because I expect the Atlanta Falcons to make a ton of adjustments going into this game. They're going to have they're going to have extra time to prepare. Best believe they're going to overcorrect whatever issues they had in week 1. Damn near flush it because they're going to overcorrect. But based off what I saw from Kirk Cousins and how he moved in that game, he did not look good to me physically. He didn't have that same pop as I've normally seen Kirk Cousins have on them throws. He really didn't. So, yeah, the Eagles defense, you know, they did some nice things in that Packers game, right? The red zone defense was, was really, really good. Uh, they forced a turnover. Linebacker play was solid. Quayon Mitchell had a strong start to his career. You feel what I'm saying? Um... Everybody was playing fast to the ball. Everybody was always around the ball. I felt like everybody's instincts were on high alert. Um, and everybody was playing downhill. It just seemed like the Eagles were playing very fast on defense, which I like. Um, and again, there were some missed tackles here and there, but I don't feel that it was a I don't feel that it was egregious. Overall, the Philadelphia Eagles have some things to hang their hat on from week one defensively. You take that and you bring you carry that over to Monday night. You build on that, and you're playing on more stable ground, and you're a week co more comfortable in the offense. Vic Fangio has, you know, Vic Fangio has, you know, you know, uh, some film to look at, right? I love what Vic Fangio had to say, by the way. I love what Vic Fangio said, by the way. He said, um, "This was talking about the Kobe Dean Devin White situation." Excuse me. Flat out, they asked him about Devin White and what's his involvement. He said, N'Kobe Dean is the starter. N'Kobe Dean is the starter, and I'm not mad at it. I want the best players on the field, period. Period. Now, God forbid something happens to N'Kobe Dean. All right, you could do a lot worse than Devin White. But as of right now, N'Kobe Dean and Zach Bond, those are my linebackers. And I love how transparent, I love how blunt Vic Fangio is. Short and to the point. We're not wasting no time. N'Kobe Dean, that's my starter. Nicobe Dean did some really good things in that game. I really wish he would have caught that pick six. Oh, my God, Nicobe, you got to catch the pick six when it lands on your lap, big dog. That pick six would have changed our whole perspective on Nicobe Dean, would it not? So, um, <laughs> yo, Pistol P, the real Pistol P says, hey, yo, Devin, De Devin White must have removed himself from that accountability group chat, huh? <laughs> Yo, Pistol P. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. You're not right, dog. You're not right. You're not right, Pistol. You're not right. Naeem Miller says, you can't overcorrect the bum Achilles injury. That boy can't move. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think schematically and play calling wise, I expect the Falcons to overcorrect. But when I go back to Kirk Cousins' film and how he moved in that game and just his footwork and then the confidence in his body and driving the ball, he didn't have it. He looked like a shell of himself. And he's already over 30. How old is Kirk Cousins? Like 34? 35? Kirk Cousins is 36, coming off of an Achilles injury. 36. Kobe barely came back off an Achilles injury. Kirk Cousins, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Y'all probably thought he was younger. Kirk Cousins is thirty six years old, and they gave that man four years, one hundred and eighty million dollars. 
180 million. If you was going to draft Michael Penix in the first round, why the hell would you pay Kirk Cousins? So, and guess what? Guess what, y'all? Guess what? I'm about to blow your mind here. Guess what? So, Kirk Cousins is 36 years old. They gave him a four year contract. So, let's just say he plays out the whole contract, right? Let's just say Kirk Cousins plays out. Let's just say Kirk Cousins plays out three years of the contract. Just three years because it's a four year deal. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, he only makes it to year three. You drafted Michael Penix in the first round. You mean to tell me Michael Penix is 24 years old and he's not going to see the grass until he's 27 or 28? You drafted Michael Penix, the oldest, damn near the oldest quarterback in his draft class, him and Bo Nix. Him and Bo Nix, old as hell. And you draft him after you sign Kirk Cousins to a four-year deal. And let's just say he only plays three years. Let's just say Kirk Cousins retire at 39. You mean to tell me Michael Penix ain't going to touch the grass until he's 27, 28? Are, you, are they crazy? And Michael Penix has an injury history. They tripping. They are tripping. Michael Penix is 24. Jordan Love is 25. Jalen Hurts is how old? 26. Jalen Hurts is 26. Think about that. Think about that. Jalen Hurts is 26. Jordan Love is 25. Jordan Love became the full-time starter. Jordan Love became the full-time starter in year three. In year three. At age 25. No, I'm sorry. I'll take that back. Jordan Love's birthday is November 2nd. So he was the full-time starter when he was 24. He became the full-time starter in Green Bay at 24. Michael Penix won't be the full-time starter until he's 27, 28. That's insane. That's crazy. That's crazy. But anyway, I think this defense is going to be way better. I think the Eagles are in good shape going forward. I think they have, a, I think they have some things to hang their hat on. I think there were definitely some good things to take away from that Packers game that you can carry over to that Falcons game. I think the Philadelphia Eagles have the edge. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to talk about this more in depth tonight. Um, make sure you guys lock in at 7 p.m. Eastern time. 7 p.m. Eastern time. Tonight, tonight, there is a live stream with my compadres. My friends, Simone Stanley, Lord Brunson, tonight we are live at 7 p.m. Eastern for the link up, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Simone Stanley, Lord Brunson, and myself, we're linking up tonight to discuss our takeaways from Eagles versus Packers. We're here to give you guys a preview of Eagles versus Falcons. We cannot wait to have this conversation, you guys. Make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you guys check us out at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, and 4 p.m. Pacific Time. And that may be 1 p.m. Hawaiian Time and <laughs> um, <laughs> 12 p.m. Uh, Alaska Time, Whatever, whatever it is. Wherever you are, make sure you guys tune into the show. Smash that like button. Stay engaged. You don't want to miss this live stream tonight. And if, even if you do miss it, double back. Watch it after the fact. The show is available. Chalk It Up Sports is available on many, many platforms. Like I said to you guys, I wanted to make sure that Chalk It Up Sports was, was available to you guys in more, in more ways than one. Um, let me show you guys this here. Chalk It Up Sports is available not only on YouTube, but it's also available on Apple Podcasts, right? You can check me out. You can check the show out on Apple Podcasts. Every episode that you guys get live will always be uploaded to Apple Podcasts and will also be uploaded to Spotify as well within the hour after the show ends, okay? 
So again, the show is available on YouTube, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Make sure you follow. Make sure you give me a five-star rating. I appreciate all of that. The shows are always uploaded. The shows are always uploaded, I want to say, within the hour after the live stream ends, okay? I wanted to make sure I'm serving everybody. Sometimes you can't catch it live. Sometimes you're on the road. Maybe you're a trucker. Maybe you drive for Amazon. Maybe uh, maybe you uh, you drive limos. <laughs> maybe you drive the SEPTA bus, whatever it may be. Um, I said SEPTA like I'm in Philly. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you drive public transportation. Maybe you're a taxi driver. You do Uber. Maybe you work with your hands. You're a chef. Whatever it may be, right? You're blue collar. Whatever you do, maybe you work in the office. I wanted to make sure I'm serving everybody. Chalk It Up Sports is available on YouTube, Apple Podcast, and Spotify, okay? And also, you guys, make sure you check out the Chalk It Up Sports merch shop. The Chalk It Up Sports merch store has gotten some updates. We have now added Hoodies and sweatshirts to the fold, okay? We added hoodies and sweatshirts. No, Naeem, it is on Apple Podcasts. You got to search. It's on Apple Podcasts. The show is on Apple Podcasts. Just, shirt, uh, just uh, search Chalk It Up Sports or search Tone to Shields. It's definitely on Apple Podcasts, Naeem. Just, uh, just make sure you search that. But yes, the Chalk It Up Sports merch shop got to upgrade. Now we have hoodies. And we have sweatshirts. And they all come in different colorways. Now, I want to give you guys the heads up, okay, about the hoodies. Aesthetically, the logo looks a lot better on the back. So let me zoom out here to make sure you guys can see this just fine. Aesthetically, the logo looks a lot better on the back of the hoodie. And on the front of the hoodie, it says Chalk It Up Sports right there. Hope you guys can see that. This is the front of the hoodie. It says Chalk It Up Sports in white letters. Not too big, not too bold. Chalk It Up Sports right here. And then on the back of the hoodie, it has the Apex Predator graphic. You know what the, you know the Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagle artwork. It has Chalk It Up Sports going down the side right here by TD2. It gives you guys some, some fun facts or some stats about eagles in general in the wild. Once again, it comes in multiple colorways. It comes in black. Comes in, comes in pine green. Also comes in asphalt heather. So the Apex Predator hoodies comes in three colors. It comes in black. It comes in green, pine green. And it comes in asphalt heather. All right. And then on top of that, we got sweatshirts as well. The sweatshirts, the graphic is on the front. Here, it comes in three colorways as well. It comes in black. It comes in military green, and it also comes in gray, sports gray, okay? So, yeah, man, I know a lot of you guys have been asking about it, and I wanted to make sure I did right by you guys, okay? So just make sure you guys lock in. Uh, the link is located in the live chat. Also, the links are available all over my YouTube channel, all over my videos. Any content you see in mine, you're going to see the promotion. You're going to see the links being available to you guys. Um, and I appreciate the support. Um, you guys have been really, really amazing. Um, I re it really goes a long way with me. Um, this show has been growing. Um, the amount of support you guys have been giving has been growing. And I don't take that for granted. So I'm going to get out of here, you guys. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the show. Make sure you stay humble, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay hungry. Thank you guys so much for donating to the channel. Thank you for giving super chats. Thank you for investing in the merchandise. It means a lot to me. I've been your humble host, Tone DeShields II. And you guys have been locked in on a very special dose of Chalk It Up Sports, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game.